welcome to Paraben Consumer Software's tutorial on VoiceLogger. VoiceLogger is a personal recording tool for Windows computers that also is a security and auditing tool. Let me go over some of the features of VoiceLogger. First, VoiceLogger can turn any Windows computer into a hidden voice recorder. Most people don't realize that computers have active microphones that can be used to record conversations in the room or on the computer itself. VoiceLogger allows you to secretly record conversations. This is very useful for auditing use of a computer and preventing unauthorized use and um, use that should not be allowed in your organization. You can actually email the recordings to any email address with VoiceLogger, so you don't even have to uh, have access to the computer again. Once you set up VoiceLogger, you can walk away and it can email you the, the recording. As an administrator, that's very important. It is voice activated, so it can actually record up to 10 seconds before the sound level triggers a recording event. It has stealth mode, which means that the interface will disappear and the user doesn't realize that they are being recorded. And you can plug in the USB drive to collect the recordings automatically and to take the um, software out of stealth mode and be able to make changes to it. So those are the basics of what VoiceLogger is and what it can do. Let's show you what is contained on the VoiceLogger USB drive when you receive it. You can see here that we have a help file. This is the comprehensive help file that will go into all the details, including advanced options. The Getting Started Guide is focused on getting it set up to be able to perform monitoring and auditing uh, for unauthorized use of your computer. It also has a couple of configuration files. Now only advanced users should change any of these. So I'm going to recommend that uh, that you don't touch them unless you're an advanced user. You have your license key. Now the licensing allows you to install VoiceLogger on one computer at a time and use it on one computer. If you need to move that license to another computer, you need to uninstall VoiceLogger and then license it on the new computer after you install it. And then of course you have the VoiceLogger software. Um, so when you double click on that, it will take you to the setup process. And I'm going to actually show you how that works. I've got it installed on this computer already, so I won't actually install it. But you uh, know that Windows will actually ask you to verify if you want to allow it to make changes, so you hit yes. You can choose to have an, a desktop icon and a quick launch icon. If you're doing this in stealth mode um, as a, a monitoring tool and a security tool, you're not going to want to check those. And when you click install, it will install the software. And then at the end, it will ask you if you want to um, launch the software and view the um, README file. You can go ahead and, and do that. One other thing that I'll, I'll note is that it, it does allow you to change the installation folder. Right now, it's an innocuous folder called VL. So most people don't won't uh, look into that. So it's up to you whether or not you want to change where it's installed. So let's go ahead and launch Voice Logger. Now the interface is pretty simple, pretty small. So let's go over the interface and the very basic setup um, for you to be able to use it as a monitoring tool. First we have the recording modes here. We have sound activated. This is going to trigger recording only when the sound level raises above your trigger event level, so you can raise or lower the threshold. Now over here is the length of time that that threshold has to be exceeded before recording starts. The very bottom is any time that um, a noise is loud enough to trigger the event, it'll start recording. This is like zero milliseconds. If you want it to um, be a little less sensitive, so like very basic noises won't start a recording, but it will start recording upon a conversation, um, then you're going to want to change this. I would recommend playing with this. If you put it in test mode here and hit record, you can see 
that when the voice level gets above a certain, the threshold here, the trigger event happens. And this is also the voice level being above it long enough for it to tr trigger that event. So if I raise this way up, you can see that that's not gonna happen. Um, but if I lower the sensitivity and have that way up, then the trigger event is, is gonna happen still. I recommend lowering this down fairly low and then stop talking to see what the ambient level of noise in the room is. You can see the ambient level here is lower, or I mean, it's higher than this threshold, so I'm gonna to wanna to raise it up or else it's gonna constantly record. So I'll go ahead and stop talking again. And that's right on the edge of ambient level of noise. Um, so you might get accidental recordings every once in a while if you're that close. I'm gonna raise it up just a little bit more and that's gonna be, be good here. So going back to the uh, recording modes, we've got the sound activated, we just covered. Normal is you can just record, hit record and, and use the uh, uh, voice locker. It's just a simple recording tool. If you want to record conversations in Skype or other tools, um, you can do that. Or if you want to record conversations with clients, this is also a great way to do it. So when you're in recording mode, you hit record, and it's going to record no matter what the sound level is until you hit stop. If you hit the pause button while this is recording, then it's going to pause but not save the file out. Only when you hit stop is it going to save that MP3 file out for you to be able to listen to it. Dictation mode is similar to um, nor, or the normal mode, except that when you're recording a dictation mode, it is also going to allow you to use the trigger so you can only record yourself when you're talking. Now, between recordings, you can actually have it play um, a sound here. Oh, so I'm gonna have to stop that. So under settings, you can have a marker tone which is gonna have that little beep between your recordings. Um, and also you can have it auto save after 30 minutes of recording. So dictation mode is a great tool, a great feature within voice logger. And I've already covered test mode here. So let's go ahead and get into the setup for your voice logger to be able to monitor activity on your computer. So under general settings here, you're gonna to wanna to change these settings under startup. You're going to want to check it to start when Windows starts. That way, if the uh, computer is rebooted, it's going to automatically launch um, Voice Logger. And you're also going to want to start recordings in the selected mode when this happens. You can also choose to have it start in stealth mode, but it's going to ask you to set up the hotkeys first. So we're going to go ahead and jump over to the hotkeys. Hotkey is what will allow you to put it into um, stealth mode and to take it out of stealth mode. The other way to take it out of stealth mode is to plug in the USB drive, the voice logger USB drive. So to activate stealth mode, we check the checkbox and we choose a combination. So I'm going to do, since I have other programs with um, control and shift, I'm going to do control, alt, shift, and S for stealth mode. When I can hit those, that key combination, control, shift, alt, and S, it will close, not close, but it will hide voice logger. Let's go back to the general settings here. So now we can hit, click st start in stealth mode and that will allow it to hide in stealth mode. You can choose where the recordings are saved. If you don't want it under the documents folder, if you want to hide it somewhere else, you can do that. Smart storage is going to save it by um, folder for the dates. So each date is going to have a different folder with all the recordings for that date in there. So for audio settings, we don't really need to change anything. Um, you can change um, re skip recordings shorter than uh, X number of seconds. I like to do it at least three seconds because uh, most conversations, anything that's uh, pertinent to <clears throat> my investigations are going to be at least three seconds long. I can also change how long it records before the first trigger. So if a trigger event happens, I like to have at least a couple of seconds 
a reporting to, for that trigger event. Um, that way, the conversation, the full conversation will be captured. And then I like to go at least a, a few seconds beyond the trigger, trigger event as well. We've covered hotkeys, events. Um, if you want to play a sound when the recording start, you can, but I don't recommend that for investigations, uh, monitoring, and uh, audit team purposes. Sound logger, this is an advanced settings. I'm going to go ahead and recommend you skip that as well. Now we have some post processing settings. So as soon as the recording stops, um, say you hit a, a trigger event, the, the noise level um, is above the trigger event, a conversation was recorded, and then the noise level drops below that trigger event for four seconds. That's going to save out the MP3 file and is going to do whatever you selected here. We can encrypt the recordings. So if you do want to encrypt the, uh, the recording, you check the box, put settings, and put your password. I don't want to do that, so I'm not going to set that up. We can send the email. Now you're going to need to look up the um, settings for your email service. Um, so you're going to have your SMTP server. Um, you're going to want to type that in, whatever it is. Um, your from address, if you're emailing it to yourself, you can put your from address and the to address in the same as the same in both from and to. The subject, you can change the subject if you'd like. And then you're going to have to have your username and password here. And then most services are going to require TLS. Some of them will do none, but most will require TLS. Once you've got that all set up and you have that checked, it will record email, uh, the, it will email the recordings as soon as they are saved. You can also copy recordings to FTP server. So if you have an FTP server, you can set that up there. And you can even execute programs um, if you'd want. Those are advanced options that I, I don't recommend you, you use. So that's the basics for setting up and using Voice Logger as a monitoring and auditing tool for security of your computer. Thank you for joining me today.